but initially uh, let's not dive deep into what it's written over here let's have a quick survey right uh, how many of you are professionals working professionals okay i see a lot of hands uh okay a lot more than i expected all right uh the next question is uh how many of you have used kubernetes okay then i might bore you man so i'm sorry uh so uh the next uh, question is how many of you have ever been to a buffet dinner i think most of you okay all right sounds good i mean uh, it seemed to be good and uh, last but not the least how many of you had french fries in today's lunch no one just kidding it's just a <laughs> anyways so um hi this is ronit banerji uh, i'm from kolkata india i'm the organizer of cloud native hugli which happens to be the community partner of ubicon asia 2024 and uh, i'm a cncf ambassador so anything uh, relevant to cloud native uh, linux foundation you can come to me we can discuss and uh, i have been an open source contributor at uh, multiple orgs uh, including dppedia which was under google summer of code last year and it's still under that and uh, i am mentoring in dppedia this time so that's pretty much about myself and you can find me in this twitter handle and also mail yeah so uh, before getting started um, can i see people who are actually uh, like who actually want to learn about kubernetes but are like not uh, very much having the hands on experience hands a lot of people not a lot of people but um, actually what i did was um, while preparing the sl slides uh, i figured out that many of the people will not have the hands on experience so for that um, i prepared few slides for you guys to have a prerequisite about containers and some of the kubernetes objects uh mostly uh, the networking objects and the workload objects won't go inside other objects but uh, yeah the basic ones which you need to get a cluster up and running that's it so uh this is pretty much self explanatory but still i'll just explain so uh if you're talking about uh, virtual machine and container if uh like whenever we talk about container it's like the isolated system uh whenever we talk about virtual machine it has higher over it containers definitely are much lighter so we use it on uh, production mostly but it's not that uh, that vms are not used but uh it is what it is so yeah uh now so some docker memes um uh, i know like um, for many of you these memes are not very relevant uh maybe the christian shoe uh maybe uh, the docker one maybe this one but it will make sense after my talk it will i promise if not then come to me all right so um before getting started uh, actually the docker is very sad cause i haven't mentioned docker yet i am just talking about kubernetes 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 and it's not fair so uh, what i'll do is i'll just quickly uh, walk you through how actually uh, we can uh, start a uh, instance of ubuntu directly on docker daemon and it will take hardly few seconds i believe if everything goes right okay so uh, first i have to make sure if the docker d1 is running so let me check okay this is running so what i'll do next is uh, i'll just simply do a docker command so uh, you can find the docker commands on uh, docker's official documentation but uh, it, this is very pretty simple i'll just use two commands for now one is for like pulling the particular docker image image is basically the package which we use for creating the container okay in simple terms but it's actually different from package it's not package but uh, to like make it uh, easy i'm just calling it package so uh, what we'll do is we will start a ubuntu container okay okay so it's docker run and we have to tag it this it is interactive terminal so that we can actually ssh into that particular uh, ubuntu instance and i'll simply write ubuntu and uh, if you want you can also tag it with latest but then what is latest it's just the tag uh, for the version and if you want you can actually use some other version as well 
it's up to you. Uh, let's use the latest one. By default, it actually takes the latest one. So it says that uh, it is not available locally. Now it will use the internet and get the image and then it will run. So after this, I think you can see that uh, I can actually zoom it in. Can you see that corner? Is it visible? Okay. If it's not visible, then I can show it to you like uh, this. Is it visible now? Okay. So this is your uh, instance, Ubuntu instance. And it was this simple to create a, a Docker instance of Ubuntu. Okay. So I think uh, now the concept of uh, Docker uh, desktop and how you can spin up an Ubuntu instance real quick is pretty much clear. Now uh, what we will do next is uh, we'll make the docker uh, happy. That's it. So the docker is happy right now. Next we will understand uh, the basic concepts of Kubernetes. And uh, I think I already asked you about uh, if someone has ever got a buffet dining principle a dinner, right? So. Uh, Let's consider a few of the components. The component is simply you or me. Works either ways. Uh, the plate on which you'll have the food, uh, the food item itself, and the table. Okay. Now uh, I'll show you a diagram which is pretty sketchy and uh, I know it's rough, but trust me, it it I haven't find like I haven't found any example like this. Okay, it's pretty self-made. So just bear with me for now. So, uh, for example, uh, you have been to a like, party or something, and you take a plate from uh, your uh, table, and what you do is you have you get the first item, right? So item one. Uh, let's consider this to be a pizza. And um, I couldn't get a better emoji, so it's just this, but let, let's consider this to be a topping or uh, something like um, anything that is going with that pizza or something like that. So it's the secondary product and is the primary product. So what we will do next is uh, we will try to find a comfort zone. Now what is this comfort zone? The comfort zone might be a vacant seat, as it mentioned, right? Uh, it can be something like uh, if we have friends around. I think many of you are having friends over here. Like, uh, might be the case that you went for the lunch and you were sitting beside your friend and not a stranger, right? So. We as human beings, we try to create our own comfort zone or try to be in one. So this is also the case of like this example. And uh, sharing is caring. For example, uh, you just uh, have this particular chutney or something like that, and you find it really interesting. And uh, you are like too much lazy to go to the buffet dining table and uh, get the chutney. And you can just ask your friend. Or you can maybe just snatch it from him. Uh, both works. So uh, so let's compare this context with a Kubernetes cluster. Same diagram, just the context is different. Now let's consider you are the namespace. The plates are the pods, the food items are containers, and the tables are nodes. Now I can also explain you what a container is. The Ubuntu which is running right now is itself a container. Okay, So it's an instance of an image, which is actually in some uh, like container registry, right? Uh, and uh, now the thing is, what we will do is that uh, we are comparing everything with this context. Right? So you are the namespace. The namespace is like, hey, uh, definitely like uh, whenever you have some food, it's not likely that someone will take your food from your plate, right? So it belongs to you. Whenever you take something on your plate, it belongs to you. So this is the namespace. It belongs to you. And the plate is the pod. Now, uh, there's a concept that people might actually get confused with. That is, a pod is equal to equal to container. But that's a wrong concept. So what we are doing is that we can have actually multiple containers in a single pod. Uh, and the primary pod is uh, the pizza over here. And the secondary pod or the sidecar container. I, I mean, my bad. The primary container is the pizza over here, and the secondary container, or we call it a sidecar container, is the topping or anything sort of that, which is actually assisting the primary one, right? So we are having both the items, which is considered to be the containers, 
on the plate, which is the pod, right? Now this pod is trying to find a comfort zone. Now what is a comfort zone for it? A vacant seat. Now a vacant seat can be said to be all allocatable location, like allocation of uh, resources. Maybe uh, there might be a case that the resources are full for a particular node. Now where does the node comes in? Like so, uh, the node is considered to be the table, right? There are how many tables? There are five tables. So there are five nodes for now. Okay. So this particular table, or you can consider it as a node as well. The last one has one empty space. Now I'll be going there, right? So the pod will be trying to get inside the node, which is vacant. First of all, the second will be the container networking, or maybe some other stuffs as well. Like uh, there are multiple parameters like tains and all. So it can have some affinity mapping and stuff. So after that, uh, we can actually talk about sharing and scaring. That is distributing the workloads amongst the uh, like uh, nodes, right? So this is the context which I was talking about. I think uh, now you can actually relate how a Kubernetes cluster actually works with the real world example. Uh, now these are the objects. Uh, the objects are pretty, like there are multiple objects apart from these as well, but these are the primary objects we will be talking about. Uh, this is the like uh, cluster IP, node port, and load balancer. Though let's not uh, get inside those things, but uh, these are just for your reference, right? And we have these for the workload environment. And also, like if you talk about all the objects, like it's a lot, so it will actually take me a three-hour session maybe to cover everything. So now let's debunk a myth. Like it was actually never Docker versus Kubernetes. Everyone will say, hey, which is better? Or it's not uh, actually the case. Uh, this blog, uh, this blog will actually help you to understand this why not. So this is actually uh, a blog written on the uh, like Ubuntu's official blog site. So you can check it out. You can scan this QR code and check it out. It's not written by me. It's like some maintainer or someone has uh, written uh, from the Ubuntu's uh, blog site. So you can check it out. Uh, this is a really interesting uh, like aspect to it. So you can definitely learn how it's different and how it actually helps each other. And uh, as it says that Kubernetes and Docker works together to build and run containerized applications. It works together actually. So yeah. Uh, so, okay, so what's this? All right, uh, Kubernetes coded tablets. This is used to targeted relief for bad infrastructure. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, all right, so the thing is that uh, we have uh, kind of three ways to deal with a Kubernetes cluster. Now, uh, what are the three ways? The first one is uh, managed Kubernetes. So what is the managed Kubernetes? Managed Kubernetes is pretty much, that is provided by the cloud providers. Uh, for example, uh, Google gives GKE, uh, your Amazon gives, I, I mean AWS gives out uh, EKS, and so on and so forth. Okay, if you are talking about some something that is not very popular, that is Linode, they give LKE, if you wanna know. So uh, these are the like uh, distros which are being provided by the, uh, basically the cloud providers. But, uh, okay, let's show you a quick demo how this thing works. That will make more sense maybe. So what I'll do is I'll use Google Cloud for this. Uh, if someone wants to follow along, uh, anyone wants to follow along by the way? Just like, curious, no one? Okay, fine, no issues. Uh, I'll just show you, you can note it down and uh, you can try it out by yourself as well. So what I'll do is I'll just create a cluster. Uh, it's pretty simple to do over here. Uh, I'll just do com configure and it asks me to like put in more details. I, is it visible guys? All right. I, otherwise I can just zoom in a bit. Okay, that's better, I guess. Okay, so uh, I think I can call it Ubicon Asia Hi. Okay, and uh, let's call it, uh, okay, so the zone is like totally depending on you. I'll go with Asia South to Then I'll check for the rest of the stuff. Let's keep them default. And finally, okay, and also if like there are channels, you can go for uh, rapid channel as well. 
rapid channel will basically give you the latest version of kubernetes but we recommend you to keep it to the regular channel so that you get uh, a stable build all right let's create the cluster at least let's try to if it fails then we will start again no, no worries okay uh, and uh, like the time by the time it gets started uh, we can do another thing that is we can actually talk about uh, the kubernetes the hard way okay uh, it, like uh, anyone knows about this concept kubernetes the hard way no one okay no one is aware about this so basically uh, managed kubernetes gives you everything like uh, for in case of managed kubernetes uh, the control plane is in the hands of uh, the cloud provider right so what is control plane control plane is basically the brain of the kubernetes cluster so uh, it is actually handled by the particular uh, cloud company right but uh, for self managed or self hosted kubernetes cluster everything is under your control so that the like that's the basic difference and also there are like uh, like there's a container network interface there can be a, a storage interface as well like there are multiple plugins which are used along with it so it comes up with uh, the managed kubernetes automatically but for the self hosted you need to create your own so actually but but that's fun and uh, you have a lot of flexibility and uh, whenever we talk about kubernetes the hard way i can actually show you uh, how it looks like so give me a minute uh, okay so this is actually the repository to kubernetes the hard way you can uh, like actually this shows how you can start a kubernetes cluster from scratch okay it's not that uh, you can like it's it's like starting from like very scratch like creating your own etcd everything definitely give it a try okay and uh, to be very honest i failed to create like uh, to follow this multiple times but uh, after you complete this entire challenge then you will be like hey i know a lot about kubernetes now but that's not actually true you will have to learn more cause it's it has no end uh, people like in devops can relate to me right now so um, like literally cloud native landscape has no end to it so you can definitely check it out uh, it will actually clear the concepts uh, a lot okay uh, so this this was one of the concept uh, like one of the ways to create a cluster but this is not recommended for uh, production okay uh, anything like it's just for experimenting uh, so now uh, we will talk about the managed one i think uh, we have it ready by now if not then okay it's like in the deploying stage it takes some time okay meanwhile i can do another thing that is uh, i can start off with the self hosted part which is actually the main uh, source of this uh, talk right so now before getting into the tutorial let's focus on the key differences right so for creating a self hosted kids cluster like there are like 12 or more steps but for creating a like cluster that is managed by a cloud service that is like literally two or maybe less like you saw it right i just created a kubernetes cluster in front of you in google cloud and it took me hardly two selections and it's pretty much done i think it's in the process so we will get it soon but uh, that's not relevant for now we are focusing more on the managed part so self managed one i mean so uh, and also like it might take a long haul to create a cluster for self hosted but don't worry we have a solution for that as well cause we will be talking about why self hosted or managed kubernetes so why should we go for self hosted if it has so much cons and caveats so these are the main reasons the first reason is full control over your kubernetes cluster be it the control plane be it the other components so like you don't need to worry about uh, the company pushing some abrupt features or abrupt uh, you know like it it happens at times you just get uh, patches which actually can break your kubernetes cluster and it's totally depending on your uh, organization like be it aws be it google so and uh, definitely this won't come up with vendor lock in if you are like uh, self hosting it on your bare metal 
may be on in your home machine may be in some uh, vm so you are not locked in right you can uh, pretty much do it in any cloud environment and uh, it reduces cost but if done the right way definitely <laughs> all right so who provides self hosted or managed kubernetes so the one we will be talking about is rancher as i told we will be ranching kubernetes right and uh, the one which is actually closed source but you should definitely give it a try that is red hat openshift that's also a great tool and uh, used in the industry like for like years now. so now uh, what we will do is we will start on with the hands on for like uh, quickly if if someone is interested like uh, can i see the hands if someone actually wants to create an rk2 cluster right now someone okay i i got how many hands 1 2 3 4 5 six okay that's that's more than enough actually thank you man so uh, you can you can actually like uh, scan this qr code and uh, we can actually do it together if you want and meanwhile okay okay let's do it for now then i'll check if that cluster is up and running or not if not then uh, curse google i'm not the one but i'll try uh just confirm if you are done with the scanning all right uh, even if you are not done then it's simply ronitbanerji.com and you will get that rke blog on my uh uh page okay that's pretty simple uh meanwhile i'll just check if this is done or not at times okay health checks are running so it will be done soon i believe fingers crossed I think uh, by then we will have our own self-managed Kubernetes cluster. Who knows? So uh, if you have scanned the QR code, I think you will be landing upon this particular page. Am am I right? It's not this page. Oh, I think I pasted the wrong QR. Ah, happens. life okay can you can you just scan this one uh, can you just scan this one by like okay <laughs> okay my bad guys uh too many qrs man like got, got confused if you are done scanning then i can continue works okay thank you so much for correcting me <laughs> okay so uh I believe you are now on this page. Okay, so uh, we will be like diving deep into how we can do this. Okay, so the concept is pretty simple. What we will do is we will just uh, create three virtual machines initially. Now uh, it can be done using like uh, cl any cloud provider. Okay, so you are not locked in by any vendor. You can use AWS. You can use Linode. You can use GCP. Anything. It's your choice. In fact, you can use Vagrant if you are uh, like. using it on local machine but vagrant can be a bit tricky at, at least it doesn't work for me i am not uh, anyways like uh, <laughs> so uh, vagrant doesn't work for me but uh, so that i can move towards gcp as i have credits so who is stopping me to use them right meanwhile i'll just check if it's done okay it's still health checking okay let it be uh, we can move to the compute engine uh does anyone have access to like any type of like cloud services anyone like uh no one okay you have access to the cloud services right now right so you will be able to like you, actually what we need to do is you need to spawn three virtual machines on same network okay so uh this should be under the same subnet in general what happens is whenever you spin up a virtual machine it will be under the same subnet so it won't be a problem so that the uh, nodes might be able to connect right so that's the story i'll simply create one in front of you guys so it's nothing rocket science what i'll do is i'll name it rke master or maybe control plane whatever you feel like control plane okay and then i'll set this to obviously uh mumbai i'll select a zone is south 1 c okay 
uh, I'll choose something like E2 mic medium that is 4 gigs of memory and uh, one or two vCPUs okay and I'll change this uh, boot disk to Ubuntu because it's Ubicon right so you should use Ubuntu and it's a great uh, distro so we will go ahead with the 20.04 uh, LTS because it's stable and I'll just allow full access to all the cloud APIs okay and also allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic and load balancer health checks so this is pretty much it uh, it's pretty self explanatory if you need any help regarding this one just raise your hand I'll, I can help you otherwise I will just select create okay it's happening Okay, meanwhile, I'll just check on the managed Kubernetes. Okay, so it's running. It's on autopilot. Okay, that's fine. So it's running. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just connect to it. Now, uh, the like way to connect to it is pretty simple. If you are using uh, Google Cloud, then you have the CLI tool. But you don't have it. If you don't have it, then uh, you can do one thing. That is, you can just download the... Uh, like the cube config okay so you can just download it and you can just uh, export it accordingly and set your context and you will be up and running right so i'll simply use the command line for now just to show the uh, this is the managed kubernetes again okay this is not the self managed which, which i will talk about later okay what i'll do is i'll just start work okay and just exit this one then I'll do this. Hope it works. Uh, it says action required. Uh, now this is some like, uh, okay, this is some G cloud uh, stuff. Entry generator. Uh, okay, I need to update it. Let's try after updating. Now these are the problems you come up with when you are using uh, Manage Kubernetes services. That, that was the that that was the problem I was talking about. Like, if it's out of version or maybe they have uh, given some patch which is, which is buggy, so these will be the problems which you may face uh, in the longer run. But to avoid these, we will be using self-managed. And here we go. Uh, action required. The same thing. So basically, uh, let's uh, not. Okay, it's okay. It's actually entry is generated so let me just try out kubectl if it gets everything i can just try it out kubectl get pods will like okay so it's getting the context from here as you can see can you can you see the screen properly like you can see like there's a uh, like small logo kind of thing then it's gke infinity and stuff okay so let's check if it's working perfectly or not okay is it not working okay so it has some issues okay so so this particular cluster has some issues but don't mind because uh, uh, we are actually pre preliminary talking about this particular uh, rancher setup so these are the problems we generally face for managed kubernetes so this is a live example how you can get uh, pissed off on stage in front of everyone so this is the live example like can't be better can't be worse as well so uh, what i'll do is uh, i'll just simply go inside the vm which we created that is your compute engine i think we have it up and running yes we have our key control plane and actually what i'll do is this one will be the like a control plane right and we will have two more nodes which will be the worker nodes so i'll just create similar machines okay I'll create similar. I'll just rename it with a uh, worker one, and the, the rest of the stuffs will be same. So I'll just create, and I'll do the same for another one. I'll create a multi-node setup, right? So I'll create similar. I will do 
RK control plane. Then I'll just work or G cloud. This is the one, yeah. RK control plane. This is Asia South 1C. Here we go. Let's try. Okay. So we are in the control plane successfully, right? So what I'll do is I'll clear this one and I'll actually split the screen for better visibility. Uh, split screen to right. Yeah. And I'll also split screen down. Okay. Okay. That looks good. Uh, okay. This needs to get updated. Okay. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just pretty much, uh, like I have SSH into the control plane. Now I'll be SSH into the, uh, worker nodes. Right. So let me get to the worker node or maybe I can just do it from here directly. I'll just copy it from here. Copy paste. I'll just change the name of the instance that is worker one. Okay, and worker two. Ah, a lot of work. Okay, I'm not running out of time, I believe. Yeah. So uh, now what I'll do is I'll simply choose which one will be the control plane, uh, which ones will be the worker, right? So like just naming the EC2 will not do the thing. So what we will do is we will just simply go to our dock and we will uh, actually first of all we will install like RK okay which is pretty simple you need to first of all just do sudo su so that you get the su super user access and you don't need to like uh, you will not get any type of problem get into any problem so you just do one thing you will just first of all you will uh, download this that is RK2 for the control plane. By default, it will be installed as if it's control plane cause uh, the first node definitely is considered to be like the master, right? So that's the concept. And whenever we will be working around with the worker nodes, we will have to export a particular variable. That's the concept. Okay, now if you have uh, external IPs and stuff, then you can actually configure using this YAML but we don't need it for now. So we will just simply sudo systemctl start. Okay. Okay. Now this will take some time. Okay. Cause uh, it will actually create the Kubernetes environment. It will actually start the control plane. It has a lot of stuff to be done. And meanwhile, I can just move to this worker one and worker two and uh, to the rest of the stuff that is. So, what we'll do is we will export this install RKE type. Now, what is this? This agent will be deciding if this is a worker node or if this is a control plane. So if I export it, then it means that it's surely a worker node. So this is the catch. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put this command after sudo suing. I'll just sudo su in both uh, VMs. Then I'll just paste this one. Okay. Now, it says that export install RK2 type is agent and I'll do the same for this one as well and it's done. Okay. So now if you install RK2, it will install as if this is a worker node. Okay. It will not install cube CTL that will be controlled from the control plane. Okay. So I think that's clear to all of you. Now what I'll do is I'll just copy this part. I'll just install. I'll just install over here as well. And if you can see, uh, this part is done. The system CTL start is over for the control plane. And I believe that uh, it's up and running by now. So what we will do is we can actually journal CTL this to like after we will journal CTL this, we will get the logs like if it has done everything correctly or not. So actually it's still doing stuff, a lot of stuff. So yeah, let's not get confused. I just cleared it out for you so that it is okay. Okay, so it's 
uh, okay it's going to something uh, all right I think I think I think I messed up with the uh, first node but it's fine you can try it out Let's see I, I can I think I can like for now I can just uh, see if the kubelet is up and running see the tunnel is up so I'll be able to access the cluster right so now what I'll do is I'll just simply uh, create the token now the token will be helping me to connect the worker nodes to the control plane right so this is the concept of this thing so what I'll do is firstly I'll just uh, like make sure that the cube CTL is up and running so I'll just paste this part and your cube CTL is sorted and I'll just copy this path so that the environment variables are being picked up correctly and that's it if you now check the cube CTL get nodes get nodes your control plane is ready 107 seconds ago so this is how you like create your control plane it has the etcd as well which will be uh, also helpful for creating snapshots etcd is basically storing everything like to, that is changed in the cluster or any sort of configuration which is like uh, stored in kpp format and uh, this is also called the master so it's just the role uh, so what we will do next is we will just try to get the ip of this particular control plane okay so what i'll do is i'll just get nodes dash o wide this will give me more detail and uh, if you can see properly i'll just yeah so this one the one like this ip is your internal ip okay so this will be important for us not now but it will be okay so what we will do is we will just for now we will clear this stuff we'll clear this stuff as well okay i don't know if i like stopped the worker one for some reason by by mistake but i'll just try it out okay now what i'll do is i'll just uh try to install and enable it from the worker setup it should work fingers crossed and here as well As a control plane is up and running, he will be soon. Uh, soon we will ha will be having the uh, worker nodes as well. So now what we will do is we will have this config. Okay. Now what will this config have? This config will have two important things. The one is the IP address of the control plane, so that it can communicate with it. And the second will be the uh, secret, which will be generated by the control plane itself okay so to generate the secret token we will actually use this command and run it inside the control plane if you run this you will get a secret code okay this this particular code will be helpful to connect to the uh, worker node okay and now what we will do is we will just wait till it gets done i think it's done now we will be creating this particular config file let's do it for the work on one first i'll get into insert i just copy this particular part and just uh, change whatever is required now this asks for the token what i'll do is i'll just copy this token from here again to remind you this token was created by the control plane right so uh, okay it got copied over here my bad <laughs> uh, backspace 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 a lot of backspaces okay okay this one looks good. okay so I'll just paste it over here okay and another change will be the server IP will be say I mean the uh, port will be the same but the server IP will be changed to the internal IP which was uh, this one I believe where is the internal IP okay this one here is the internal IP that is 10 okay again I'm typing over here that is 10 dot uh 160.15.210 okay looks good uh i think i can save it for now wq okay i can i can actually have a copy of it um uh, okay again insert i can actually have a copy of it uh, yeah now i can actually save it 
okay now i will uh, like okay i have to i can create this again for the worker 2 okay cool now i have to paste it again okay i have to do the same thing over here i'll copy the token from the control plane i'll be pasting it in the worker node 2 Okay, this part is done, and I'll just change the IP, which is supposed to be ten dot something. Ten dot where's the IP? Ten dot one sixty, one sixty dot fifteen dot two hundred ten. Okay, I think this should work. All right, uh, we have created everything that was needed to be done. Now. fingers crossed the only thing we need to do is queue like system ctl start for both the nodes let's do it and wait for a few seconds if this gets done then we can actually check for the nodes from the control plane if it's connected then hola we have created the cluster otherwise hard luck for me <laughs> let's see okay the first one is done maybe the second one is done Okay, the moment of truth. Ah, you see it here. Get nodes. Phew. Okay, <laughs> it's running. So it's not ready yet, but uh, we have successfully uh, added the worker nodes to the cluster, just using the external IP and the token. Ah, uh, it will be ready if. you can wait for a while i think we can just put it to uh watch okay if we put it to watch okay so this okay these are ready now okay everything seems to be fine all right great so uh can i see any hands like how many of you could follow along any no one you could follow along it worked for you salute man congrats <laughs> uh all right so as you can see the nodes are up and running for the final time all of it is healthy and if you want to actually like put some workload to it okay just to test it out like even if it's like ready for production or not you can like simply like these are additional services which i have put on the dock you can just simply uh try this amount to check if this is running or not so what i'll do is i'll just put it to here okay okay so uh hold on so uh, yeah so okay mm okay these are just cert manager okay for uh, this particular environment these are just sample uh, workloads these are not uh, like very much relevant to whatever we are doing it's just for checking if some everything is perfectly working or not okay uh can use this as well we we'll just simply copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste a uh, lot of stuffs lot of stuffs lot of stuffs okay 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 i feel intimidated now okay i think i think uh, we have put a lot of stuffs uh, we shouldn't put anything else so i'll just clear and i'll just do one thing that is cube ctl get pods dash a and put it on watch okay nothing failed everything is running perfectly fine at the pink of their health at the pink city so i'll also check the services if that's working fine or not svc dash a cool everything seems to be very fine okay crazy isn't it so i think uh, we have successfully created a cluster using rke for the first time so congrats you have just learned to create a multi node cluster using rancher rk2 um i know it it was like a bit sketchy but uh, yeah i definitely hope that you have learned something new from here All right I think I'm pretty much done from my side if you have any questions yeah please I think you can just share with us why I I don't know which I think the which uh, which perspective or in me somehow why we need venture on top of 
Sorry? It's not actually it's not about RKE on top of Ubuntu. It was about like uh, we are using uh, Ubuntu base images for like uh, for example we are implementing those nodes. They are running Ubuntu. Like it's not. Sorry. It's fine. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, like, it, it's basically the the nodes which are running Ubuntu, uh, the distro. It's not like uh, like we are we are not building on top of Ubuntu, right? So the base image is Ubuntu for that particular virtual machine. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, please. Uh, sorry, can you can you just like, huh? Hmm. See the rancher auto scaling part. Like, if if you want to create auto scaler for rancher, this is a different setup. This is not this is not the go, like the setup which you will want. Like that that's, that's a separate use case. Uh, if you want to get a rancher for auto scaler, then you have to use a config dot yaml uh, like that's mentioned in the documentation. Okay, you will get it on rancher documentation how to set up uh, like uh, rancher for like auto scaling of stuffs and. It, it's basically like uh, whenever you start the script, it will ask for your uh, use case, it will ask for your CNI, it will ask for your drivers, it will ask for whatever you will need for the cluster, right? It will just have the information and it will create a YAML file for you. And you can just directly apply it and uh, your cluster will be up. But uh, at times people feel that it's a bit like, it's not very beginner friendly. So I kept, tried to keep it beginner friendly and just, uh, try to implement Kubernetes in Rancher and like just to create a cluster out of Rancher. So that was the main motive of this talk. Got it? That, hope that helps. Yeah. Anyone else? All right. If not, then uh, thank you. Uh, let's connect. Uh, if you have any like doubts, uh, we can talk after this session as well.